Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. It's been a long break and I plan to start the technical part again and uh, let's continue the series and today we are going to look at one of the topics from the microservices architecture. So we are going to talk about the circuit breaker. It's mostly related to the reliability of your services. So we are going to understand where we need a circuit breaker, how to use it, when to use it. We are going to answer all the questions and at the end we are going to configure a circuit breaker and uh, see a real demonstration on how to use it. So with that let's begin. So the name circuit breaker, it's a, a commonly heard term and it is a term that is borrowed from the electrical uh, field. So a circuit breaker definition from Wikipedia is a circuit breaker is an electrical safety device designed to protect an electrical circuit from damage caused by an overcurrent or short circuit. Its basic function is to interrupt current flow to protect equipments and to prevent the risk of fire. So let's not go into much detail. So we, are, we have just read a couple of lines from here and we are going to understand how this is relevant in microservices architecture or in a distributed system architecture. So before that, let's see where we can see a circuit breaker. Find a circuit breaker at your home or in your apartment or flat. You will find a box wherein you have all the small circuit breakers over here and whenever there is a fluctuation in the current, so this thing trips off. So this will fall off like this and which will disconnect the power. So if there is a malfunction, it will just go down and once you fix the problem, you're supposed to make it up. So you can see here, as I put it down, the entire power goes off for the apartment. And once the problem is fixed, you're supposed to put it up and it should be working as expected. So we have just seen a circuit breaker and here are the some images and now let's understand how this is relevant and why the name is taken in a microservices architecture. So in short, we have understood that the purpose of a circuit breaker is to break the circuit in order to prevent a failure from happening. So if there is a malfunctioning, we are just stopping the circuit, right? Or rather we call it, it's opening the circuit. So a circuit breaker has only two states. One is an open circuit, one is a closed circuit. So the closed circuit is the default one when everything is running. As you can see, the light is glowing. And the second is a open circuit. When there is a problem, the circuit will open, preventing the electricity to flow. So it is open and it's disconnected. And you can see that there is no light over here. Over here, you have the light. So when there is a problem, it saves your devices or your appliances at home from any power or voltage fluctuation and things like that. And similar things we desire for our microservices architecture as well. So as you know, it is a distributed system. There is not just a single system, but there are several system, right? That communicates with each other. So let's uh, take an example here to understand. So, so let's say I have an API to get uh, a book details by a book ID. So let's say we, we pass the ID, we have an API like this, right? So what we do is we go to the service over here. So we have a book service and we have our corresponding databases over here. We go to the uh, book service. We have the database where we have the book stored. We have a cache as well, probably. So we can check if the book is already present in the cache and we return the book details. So let's say we return something like this, the ID that is being passed to us, the name of the book, let's say collected stories. And uh, let's say we send the author, we have O. Henry, something like that. So with the growing demands, we want to enhance our UI. So definitely this API is being called by a UI from where we are seeing the book, the book name, the author and details, everything like that. And this is the API that we are invoking. But along with this book, I also wanted to uh, give the ratings and reviews of this book. So definitely I'm not going to have them in the book service. So let's say I have a review service which the book service calls. We have a similar service. It has its own database cache, whatever is required. And what it does is for this particular book, it returns me the ratings. So let's say it's, uh, it's rating is returned as say four or something like that. And then you have the comments as well. So the comments array is returned to us. So we have multiple comments here. This response that is sent by this uh, preview service is collated and it is sent back along with the book. With this book detail, so let's put it in a different color. We are going to send the rating reviews, something like that. I'm just doing it for your understanding purpose. So we are going to send up 
object back over here that contains the rating and we have the reviews which is a array and this may be an integer so let's say 4.2 so as we see that we are calling another service and let's say i wanted to connect to the other services external services let's say i just wanted to call amazon api to see the availability of this book how many copies are available so that uh, I can say that okay buy it on Amazon buy it on Flipkart buy it on some other site so we might do a lot of integration with other websites as well right and uh, we can fetch the details from here and we can say that okay we have some shopping information so this is an array of shopping and uh, probably we can send out the name is Amazon and some link followed by the link so that you can click on it and you are redirected to the Amazon site. Similarly, we can do it for Flipkart as well, right? So the main intent over here is to show you that the services that we use these days are not in isolation, but we have a lot of services. We just saw that we have a rating and comments, which is internal. We might have external integration with Amazon, Flipkart. Just this book API might be calling a lot of other services in order to get the details. For example, we might have another service internally by uh, uh, the same called referred books. So other books related to the same categories, we can have referred book services, which is again uh, telling me that, okay, when you are viewing these books, uh, collected stories by O. Henry, probably you can check out these books as well, right? So we can have many other integrations like this. So the problem with this approach is, let's say we have this referred book services or we have this uh, uh, rating and comment services. So let's say this service is down over here. So what will happen is when you make a call, so when you are trying to get the ratings and reviews for this book, you might get a 500, right? So what will eventually happen is your this API, that one that you have called over here for the books will also return a 500 right it's a cascading failure so this call has led to a failure and this has made our call failed as well right but do we really need to make this api fail just because the review and rating has failed we can probably show that as empty we can return something like an empty array for this object over here so rather than saying that okay i didn't get a rating i am making this api fail what i can say is that okay i am not going to send this information so this information will not be sent right and uh, let's say our book api is very common and you are making some 500 million calls does it make sense to call this ratings and review services again and again when we saw that it's returning 500 for some period of time this is our book service and we have our rating service over here and this is our book service so same thing we are going to do is we are going to have a circuit breaker in between so what we are going to do is we are going to open the circuit we are not going to make a call so we are going to keep that circuit in an open state because i know that this service has been failing for the last 30 minutes and I am not going to call him again. I am not going to knock him again to know that whether you are up or not. So I will have a configuration at my hand to configure our circuit breaker over here. So all this integration that you see over here, this Amazon, this Flipkart, this referred books, this rating, I am going to have circuit breaker for all of them wherein I will be checking the response time for this APIs and I am going to decide whether I am going to make the call or, or I am going to presume that it's going to fail and I'm going to send a templated response back to the service. So we have seen that uh, there are two states in the circuit breaker, right? The one is a closed state when everything is normal, the circuit breaker remains in the closed state. All the calls will pass through the service or all the electricity will pass through the circuit. So when the number of failure exceeds, so what we do is we send it to a open state from the closed state. So the closed state is where everything is working as expected and then we open the circuit so that this call is not sent so this is a open circuit so book will not call the rating service and it will assume that it's not working and we are going to send a templated response back we are going to see this in a lot more details so this this everything when we should move from a open state to a closed state 
and from a closed state to an open state is all driven by the configuration. So we configure it, right? So if we say that, let's say, uh, if 10 calls fails within, uh, say, 5 seconds, then don't make calls until 30 seconds. This is just an example, but we will end up in scenarios like this, right? So in a real circuit breaker, what we have seen is when the circuit comes down, when this switch that we have seen is tripping off or it's going to a open state, what we have to do is we have to come and manually put it up, right? But in a software system, what we do is we do that automatically based on the configuration. So we will configure it and that's why we have introduced another new state which is called half open which your uh, circuit breaker at home might not have. We might have only close and open state. So what is a half open state? So after a timeout period that as we have mentioned that 30 seconds is the timeout that we have uh, configured, the circuit switches to a half open state to test if this problem, if there is a problem previously over here, this problem has been resolved or not. If a single call fail in this half open state, the breaker will trip once again. And if it succeeds, the circuit breaker resets back to the closed state or we will allow all the call. So basically what happens is we are in the closed state first and if we face some problem, we go to an open state, not allowing any call. Then we put it in a half open state and test with a single or a predefined number of calls to see that how is it responding. And if, if everything goes fine, then what we do is we again send it to a closed state or we send it to an open state again and we wait for that amount of time. So there is no point in calling the same service again and again and getting a 500 response back. So rather we can say that, okay, I don't need to send this response back, this ratings and reviews, we'll send it blank. But yeah, we are good to send a blank and our UI will still function. We don't need to take this entire application down. So just to get a high level understanding of how this complicated or a distributed system works, let's see how Netflix works. So, so I came across an interesting video over here, uh, Mastering the Chaos, a Netflix guide to microservices. So this is what are the services, right? And these small dots are the requests and this is how your network or your network call flows in the system. So you have a elastic load balancer in the front and there are a bunch of services through which these services are getting called, right? So let's say if this service over here fails, so all the services, the cascading effect will make everything else fail over here and we don't need to make that thing, right? So I highly recommend that you go through this video. This is a very interesting talk that I have came across uh, lately. This is, uh, I will definitely share the link in the description as well. So let's try and understand what are our different options and strategies that we can use in order to configure our uh, circuit breaker. So the first approach that we can do is a count based sliding window. So we can define a sliding window and uh, we can use that window to see how many calls are passing or failing in that. So we can say that, okay, if 30% or 50% or 60% of the calls fails in that sliding window, uh, let's say the sliding window size is 10 and then we can say that, okay, open the circuit breaker. We are not going to make the call. We can make a time-based sliding window. So in that we'll uh, not take the number of calls, but we'll take the number of seconds. So let's say that, okay, so it's a time-based sliding window. So we are going to see what has happened in the last 10 seconds or n seconds. It's totally dependent upon your configuration. And then you have the failure rate. So you need to configure your failure rate and the slow call threshold you can configure in order to open your circuit. So there are several strategies that you can follow in order to open the circuit. So, so basically what you do is you wrap your call with the circuit breaker uh, pattern and the circuit breaker pattern keeps a track on how many call has succeeded, how many call has failed in the given uh, threshold and it decides whether to send the call or to send the templated response back. Circuit breaker is uh, very widely and commonly used. Uh, you will find it in different languages as well. So in Java you have uh, Hystrix and Resilience 4J. Hystrix is currently under maintenance and Resilience 4J is uh, commonly used. So we are going to have a quick demo on Resilience 4J. So we are going to create a very simple project. We are going to call it um, circuit breaker demo. We are going to keep it very simple and uh, when it comes to dependencies, we are just going to add Spring Web. We are not going to add anything. 
though you will find a uh, uh, resilience for j over here but we are going to add it later we are not going to use it now okay. to start with we are going to keep it simple and we are just going to go ahead and generate a simple project we are going to download the zip file we are going to extract the zip and uh, we are going to remove this name because it's already inside a folder so here is the project you can open it with uh, your choice of id it's a maven project so you can see the pom and the maven file as well we are going to use intellij we are going to open this project using intellij the project uh, which will load up pretty fast because we don't have much things inside it so let's take a deeper look inside the project you have the main inside you have the java and you have a single java class to, to bootstrap your application and you have a resource uh, folder which is empty with two empty folder static and template and application properties which is also empty and then you have your test folder wherein you have a single class which is your uh, test class a spring boot test class with an empty test method for your reference so let's take a look into the pom so as we have just done so we have added the spring boot starter web and spring boot starter test nothing is there it uses java version 17 i have 13 installed so i'm going to change this to 13 and pretty much uh, that's it inside uh, your uh, pom you have a plugin for your maven that's all so what we are going to do is we are going to first create some apis so we'll create a package called resources in the resources we will create a external resources we will try to mimic the behavior of the dependent services so let's say uh, we are naming it as external resource we are going to define this as rest controller and also we are going to give a request mapping and uh, let's say the path is api external we are going to keep this very simple inside this we are going to have uh, two get mapping one for our api that is slow so we are going to uh, use all strings so that we uh, don't create much class in this project and we keep it simple for our understanding purpose so we'll also name this method as slow and uh, let's um, throw some exception from this because we are going to make this uh, method uh, slow so we are going to generate a random number between 100 0 to 100 so if the random number that we are generating is less than 50 in that case i am going to add some sleep to this uh, method so i'm going to make it sleep for five seconds and then we are going to return slow followed by the number this is just a, a simple method which is uh, just degrading your performance nothing else so this method is just meant to uh, return slow as a string with a random number and 50 percent of the time we are going to make this uh, method slow so this method will always succeed but it will have a degraded performance so in 50% of the cases, it will take more than 5 seconds and for the remaining 50%, it will be faster. And similarly, we'll create another method which will be very similar to this. And we are going to call this uh, method or API as risky. The only difference between the two is that we are not going to make it sleep over here. Rather, we are going to throw an exception. So this method will fail 50% of the time. And the other method will be slow 50% of the time. So this method will succeed only 50% of the time. And this method will succeed 100% of the time, but will have a degraded performance. So let's test this two method first. So let's run this application so it's already spinning up and uh, let's head over to postman where we are going to try this uh, new so you can see that it has responded in 141 millisecond so it is in the faster range now it uh, hit that uh, block wherein it's going to be really really slow it took 5.02 second right so you can see that sometimes it is uh, really really fast and sometimes it's really slow 
and we don't want the user to have this degraded kind of experience when one of our dependent or integrated service starts performing badly right because we are not talking about a single request we are talking about a million of requests that might hit in a production ready busy service right so now let's mimic a scenario wherein we are creating our book resource the one that we have uh, discussed during our whiteboarding session so we are putting a rest controller over here and we are putting a request mapping with um, api slash book and here we are creating a very simple method again so public string get books so we are not going to call this uh, directly we will follow the good practices that we generally do so we are going to create a service package and create a service so we will create a services package and we are going to create um, a book service which is uh, going to be pretty simple so i am going to first annotate this with service and then i am going to uh, put a method public string get book and i am going to just return over here my book i'm going to keep it very simple for now and we are going to uh, slowly change this so we are going to auto where the service that we have created so private book service book service and we are going to return this book service dot get book so we need to so we are creating a get method and we are just restarting the service So the service is up and now when I call the book service, I can see that I'm getting my book without uh, any problem in less than five milliseconds or 10 milliseconds of time, which is pretty decent, which is pretty nice, I would say. Now I need to integrate my service with uh, some of the external services. So external services, let's say these are my external services. So let's try with the risky API first. So this is our risky API. And what we need to do is we need to make a call to this service. So let's use rest template over here which will uh, be pretty simple to use so basically we are going to call this api so i am going to get the risky response risky api response in a string so we are going to use the rest template and we are going to call get object wherein we are passing so we'll use uh, this risky api and this will definitely return a string because we have um, been returning a string all this while and whatever response i get from here i am just going to append this result with uh, my risky api response so what will happen with this approach is that my api will also start failing will have the cascading failure effect in my api as well so when i try to hit the method you will see that often we will get into an internal server error and few of the times or 50 percent of the times we are going to get a success the problem with this is that uh, the external service has impacted us as well and we might have so many external services they might go down at any point of time and we should not get impacted wherever we can right we should feel amicably we can return some default response so we will see how to deal with that so to do that as we have discussed we use circuit breaker and uh, First, we, what we are going to do is we are going to add the dependency of this circuit breaker into our project. So we'll go to POM and uh, add the dependency. So here we are going to add the resilience 4J. So this is a part of Spring Cloud Framework. So we have to add a dependency management so that uh, the dependency is resolved. So we are going to add, uh, after the dependencies, we are going to add a, a configuration for the dependency management and uh, we need to sp specify the spring cloud version that we are going to use for this so here in the properties part we are going to just uh, put the version so we are going to use 2021.0.4 and uh, we are going to go to the maven tab and we are going to sync this project so that the dependencies are resolved and everything looks fine so you can see that it's gone when the color has changed so the dependency is resolved and we are good to go. okay 
now what we are going to do is we are going to create some config for the uh, resilience for so let's create a package uh, before we create the class so let's create a um, configs and we are going to create resiliency config over here uh, we are going to annotate this class as configuration and uh, we are going to create a bean inside this class so this is basically a configuration bean so we are going to create um, a customizer so this will uh, return a resilience 4j circuit breaker factory and we are going to give a name as um, global config you can give whatever name you wish to and what we are going to do is we are going to create um, circuit breaker config inside this so this is the main configuration that is responsible for opening the circuit or uh, keeping the circuit in a closed state so this will do everything so we are going to name it circuit breaker config and uh, this is a um, uh, builder pattern so we are going to just do a build and we are going to add our configurations to it so the first configuration that uh, as we have discussed we are going to add is failure rate threshold so what is the percentage of calls that need to fail when the circuit opens so we will say 50 percent when 50 percent of the call fails we are going to open and also 50 percent of how many calls we are talking about so we are talking about a sliding window of um, size 10 so out of the sliding window size of 10 if 5 call fails we are going to open the circuit and once we open the circuit we need to also specify how long you are willing to stay in the open state so that the calls will not be made so we are going to say that okay we are going to um, hold it for 15 or 10 seconds we are not going to make any call once the circuit is open so this is our configuration so uh, let's set this configuration into the circuit breaker factory so factory dot configure default and uh, we are going to pass a id so every time we are going to pass a id to it so we are going to instantiate um, resilience for the configure builder and we are going to build this and also we need to set the circuit breaker config the one that we have created just now so this is what the configuration would look like and now what we are going to do is we have already created a service book service and here we are going to auto wear the circuit breaker factory so we are going to auto wear this so that we can get the uh, configuration and we are going to use this config so we are going to create with the id so let's say the name for the same is uh, risky API circuit breaker so let's say this is the name for the same and we need to assign this to a member variable so what we have basically done is we have given a name and we have got the config so now we have the circuit breaker uh, configuration with me so what we'll do is we'll use this circuit breaker to run and uh, provide a supplier so the supplier is nothing but uh, the api call that we are making over here and if there is any failure we are going to go with a fallback so we are just going to name this fallback for risky api and we are going to create this method over here and we can give a default implementation so this implementation is when my api fails or when my circuit is open what should i do so in this case what i'll do is uh, previously we were returning a number right so we'll return default because this is the default in, in because this is the default implementation of the same right now if i rerun this application you will see a difference that the failure is completely gone it won't fail ever we have some problem here pass the id Now we are going to rerun this application once again.
now when I run this you will notice something that uh, it will give me a default when there is a failure so you can see an exception behind this so whenever there is a number missing it will go to the default and once uh, the threshold is hit then you'll continuously get default uh, the request will never go to the service anymore so if I had to put this in this way that uh, let me put um, a debug point over here and uh, let me stop this application and uh, let's run this in debug mode so the application is up in debug mode so every time the method gets called we'll have a debug pointer so you can see that um, our debug point is hit this method is called so you can see that it failed again it got called but it failed again it got called this time also it failed again it got called so four times you saw it got called so it's uh, getting called this time it was uh, a pass again it got called and um, this time also it is failed again it got called so we see a bunch of failures now what will you will notice is that it will stop making the call once it reaches the threshold that we have configured so you can see now it's no more making the call so it's directly going to the default because the circuit is open so we have given a configuration over here that if the circuit uh, if there is a failure of 50% in a uh, sliding window size of 10 then we are going to open the circuit for a duration of 10 seconds and once the 10 second duration is up you will see that the calls are started going again so it will go again it will uh, close the circuit and again once the condition is met we are hit with uh, some failures as we have configured it won't send it uh, to the service it will stop sending to the service and it will start serving from the default so it might look very simple but when you have millions of requests coming in in 10 seconds you will uh, have a lot of requests your performance will be degraded if you are uh, not doing uh, or not taking care of the incoming request or you're degrading the performance of your request so you can see here again we fell back to default so now uh, taking a step now about uh, the slow APIs so for the slow APIs it's going to be the same thing so what we have done is for the uh, risky API uh, similarly we can do for the slow API as well so uh, what you can do is we can just change the name to slow and uh, and uh, what we can do is we'll just um, do a slow API response and uh, let's uh, make a call without uh, the circuit breaker in place because our circuit breaker is not going to help here because we are dealing with uh, slow APIs not the one that is failing and uh, let's append the response of this as well now what will happen is our API will still function as usual there won't be any problem but the thing is that we will have a degraded performance 50% of the time sometimes our API would take more than 5 seconds and sometimes it would be less than 5 seconds or rather 50% of the time it's going to be uh, less than 5 seconds so you can see here that it's fine now it's pretty slow it hit that uh, slow mark it took more than 5 seconds so it's degrading the performance and whenever there is this kind of degradation it's very bad experience for the user so what we should do in in such cases is that we should have a configuration and that is not your circuit breaker configuration but that is your time limiter configuration so we are going to create a time um, time limiter config so similarly we'll just uh, use the custom and we'll build it with uh, the configuration we need we are going to have this simple so this is pretty much simple so we have a timeout duration and we are saying that okay we are um, giving half a millisecond of time so if it does not uh, if the call does not finish in half a millisecond we are just going to uh, fall back 
and we are going to add a time limiter config and let's put it over here so we are good to go over here once the configuration is done we should go to the book service over here and similarly we should um, get this renamed first circuit breaker risky i'll make it and uh, change the name over here and here we'll have another circuit breaker the config uh, will be pulled and we'll call it um, slow circuit breaker so we are going to name this slow and uh, similarly we are going to wrap this and we are going to provide the supplier and uh, we are going to return it from here itself we are just going to say slow and the default you can create method if you need to but if you don't need you can directly do it from here now our service is kind of ready so even if the first one fails we are uh, going to go with the default as we have seen for the slow one we are going to wait just half a millisecond and if we don't get a response within that time we are going to say that uh, okay we are going to send the default response back now if you notice it's never going to go to uh, five seconds that we have seen earlier we might get default but we'll never go and hit that five second mark so our api will succeed but uh, it might not have all the result it might have some of the default result in this case you can see both are uh, getting the default both are failing so even if you have some flaky apis or flaky services in your downstream it's going to take care of the same and it's going to make sure that it's you are not impacted your performance is not degraded your response or success rate uh, does not uh, fall because of this right you don't he will no longer be a victim of a cascading failure effect so this is what uh, a circuit breaker does this is a pretty simple yet very powerful and very important thing in a distributed system architecture we integrate with so many services and we cannot uh, ensure that they are always up and running or they are very healthy or they are responding pretty fast so we should uh, protect our services uh, from all the external services if there is any uh, deviation in them in terms of performance we should configure we should use the appropriate values and make sure that we are not impacted by any problem at their end so that's all from this video i hope you are able to get uh, why and how to use a circuit breaker at least the basic configuration and i'm sure you can dig from here to understand them in a lot more details so with this uh, i'll end this video so do let me know it has been a video after a long break do let me know in the comment section it was uh, great to hear from all of you guys uh, it was good to know that uh, my video matters to so many of you so many of you has paying me for creating videos it's uh, really motivating but i could not uh, give much time so yeah going forward i'll try to create regular videos from now on so bye bye take care and see you soon again and do let me know in the comment section i would uh, love to hear back from you all bye bye take care and uh, see you soon again.